Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim, a Canadian girl, and today I am going to show you how to make your very own worm bin, so please stay tuned. Many of you have met Mo, my own earthworm bin. Every few months you should dismantle your worm bin and freshen it up. So that's what I'm doing today and it's a perfect time to show you how to set up your own worm bin. The first thing you will need is a box. I like wooden but you can use any material. Many people use rubber made bins or even an old dresser drawer. To prepare the box or bin you chose to use, it will need ventilation. By drilling holes all around top and sides will give the worms air they need and ventilation to keep your worm bin nice and fresh. I drilled holes all over Mo. I did a few rows on each side and on the top. Drilling holes in the bottom will be more for drainage in the event that your worm bin gets a little too wet. Before you start working on your worm bin, you need to decide on a location. Once it's full, trust me, you won't be able to move it easily, so it's best to get it situated first. Also, you will want to keep your worm bin elevated a couple inches off the floor. I just have mine sitting on 2x4s, but you may want to put a catch tray underneath. Today, I'm going to move the soil into this red bin, picking out the large bits of paper and scraps that haven't been eaten. The very bottom of the bin will have wetter soil and I'll keep that aside. Here I have a bowl of lettuce and also a bowl of coffee filters and coffee grounds, which are a worm's favorite. So I guess it's time to get to work. I am going to sit on my bucket of instant ocean and get started. Once you have this complete, it's time to start filling the bin. At this point is where you will create your own worm bin. Mo is empty. The good soil that the worms are in are in the red bin. The bits I removed are in the pail. The first thing we're going to do is soak down our newspaper strips until they are good and wet. That will be our first layer. You will need about a full five gallon pail of dry newspaper. Once it's good and wet, you'll be left with approximately half a pail. And that will go in the bottom. So we place the wet paper in the bottom of the bin, fluffing it up so it's nice and loose. Before replacing the soil containing the worms, I took off a full pail of the soil that was at the very bottom of the bin. The worms don't use it anymore as it's been worked. So you need to remove this soil so they can work the next batch. This soil is filled with nutrients and excellent for around your plants. Della is just making sure I'm doing this right. I have the torn coffee filters and coffee grounds spread out across the top of the bin. So now I've added the kitchen scraps and it looks more like I'm making a salad. I will top this off with a couple handfuls of the soil. I topped up the worm bin with a couple nice sized scoops of soil just to cover the mulch a bit and I have my newspapers soaking in a pail, ready for the next step. The final layer is your wet newspapers. Now that you have this ready, there are a few things that you will need to do. You can use the kitchen scraps, um, pretty much anything except for meat, bones, oils, or dairy products. Um, it's also best to avoid onion and citrus as they are too acidic. Using coffee grounds can also contribute to acidity in the soil, so I only add them once a month. It can be easily monitored by using a test strip to check the pH. Your pH should be in the range of 0 0.6 to 0.8. If it's higher than that, you can just crush some eggshells and they will neutralize the acid in the soil. If you're adding mulch that is very wet, remove as much of the moisture as you can. 
Also avoid adding any seeds as they could sprout. Worms will not eat anything that is sprouting. Right under the newspaper, you can add your worms. Spread them out a little and they will make their way to the food and the soil. I would begin by adding four to five containers of red wigglers to start. That will give you two dozen per container. Within a month, you should start seeing babies. They're tiny and white at first, but quickly change to resemble mom and dad. A 10 gallon worm bin can easily hold 500 wigglers. If you plan on digging your own worms, be sure that the area has not been treated with any chemicals or fertilizers. Worms are usually added by weight rather than number. One pound of worms will consume three pounds of kitchen scraps per week. The three most important words for a worm binner are feed, fluff, and water. Feed, fluff, and water. When you feed your worms, lift the layer of newspaper, add the food, fluff it up so it's nice and loose, and then replace the paper. If the paper is feeling dry, you can replace it with fresh wet paper or re-wet the existing paper. The paper should be replaced every couple of weeks or so. If you feel the bedding is getting too dry, you can wet it down with a spray bottle. You don't want to over wet it. You will need to monitor how much your worms are eating and soon you will come to know what to feed them. I feed my worms two to three times per week, approximately one cup each time fluffing their bedding and scraps and wetting if necessary. Anything worthwhile takes time and commitment. This to me is worthwhile. Besides, you always have bait for fishing. So this is my channel highlight for this video. I came across a channel called Freddy Got Fished. Freddy started this channel just over a month ago. This is the youngest channel I have ever highlighted. In that short span of time, he has created some outstanding videos. I can't even put them into words. I just have to tell you, you must get over there and subscribe to his channel. Freddie is charismatic, funny, playful, yet serious about his love for this hobby. His love lies with freshwater predators and monster fish. That's only the beginning. In his fish room, he breeds shrimp, snails, placos, and food for his snakeheads. He has a variety of tanks, including planted tanks. He does DIY videos and how-tos. Freddy is inspiring, comical, entertaining, knowledgeable, and that's only a small part of who he is. He makes his home in Sweden and has an accent to prove it. Trust me, this channel is going places and you will be glad to be part of his journey. Please take a minute and share some fish fam love and subscribe to his amazing channel. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a super day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.